Hi, this is a continuation for Power Electronics Lectures, and in the previous lectures we covered some switches like transistors and diodes, and today I'm going to continue uh, talking about switches, which are the thyristors. Uh, so these are um, maybe included in a family called SCRs, and SCRs means silicon controlled rectifiers. So the rectifiers means diodes, okay, and controlled, that means we can control them, and silicon, that means they are uh, made of silicon, but they can be made of other semiconductors, but mainly for silicon. So they are diodes, but controlled diodes. Symbol for a thyristor is look like this. So it's like a diode, exactly like a diode, anode and cathode, but it has a third terminal, which is the gate. Okay, and I think you will agree with me that the gate is to control if it's on or off. Okay, we will see this now. So this is the IV curve for the thyristor and the thyristor by simple words it it is a diode okay but it will not conduct the voltage or the current from the anode to cathode until i provide uh, a pulse uh, at the gate and if i turned on the thyristor and provided that pulse or that turn on a uh, voltage it will flow the current from anode to cathode but if I turn off the uh, gate pulse or release my pulse, it will keep the thyristor on. So the thyristor is semi-control device. I can turn it on by providing a pulse here, but I can't turn off by removing that pulse, okay? And this is what is explained by this IV curve. So we have here voltage, and even if the voltage from the diode to cathode is more than 0.7, maybe 10, 20, 100, 200, 1000 volt, the anode will not pass any current to the cathode. Even if it's in a forward bias, this is the voltage, and negative, even if it's more than the, the, the forward voltage, but still it's waiting for the gate to trigger it, okay? So that means here, if we have voltage across the thyristor, anode to cathode, increasing more and more and more and more and more, this will not make it pass any current, and the current will be zero until the moment that I provide a gate pulse. So, for example, I, I'm here at this voltage. It's maybe high, maybe 100 volt. I give it, the, give it a pulse for the gate, so it will turn on, and the current now will pass. And once it turns on, the voltage across the thyristor drops, okay? So even if the voltage is high here, for example, okay, maybe 1000 volt, for example, okay, this 1000 volt will not pass from the uh, analog to uh, anode to cathode until I provide a gate uh, pulse, and once I provided the voltage between the anode and cathode from 1000 drops to very small value, okay, because you are like closing the switch, and if you close the switch, the switch look like a short circuit okay so we can just understand it like this once i turn on the gate i will short circuit the anode to cathode okay or the thyristor so that's why the voltage will drop to a small value it's not very very small but to a small value okay so this is how we read this iv curve and it works in forward bias like this but if it's reverse bias it will be like a diode it will not accept any current going from cathode to anode, okay? Even if you provided a gate pulse, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't allow that. And after providing higher and higher and higher voltage in the reverse phase, you will break down your device and it will be damaged, okay? So this look like um, exactly a diode and it has tiny leakage current here, but for the forward bias, it needs a pulse for that, okay? So this is the pulse and it doesn't need to be a continuous on time all the time just a pulse is enough to turn on your thyristor this is very important and maybe different from transistors transistor you have to provide continuous current or continuous voltage across the gate or base but for the thyristor just a pulse short pulse enough to turn it on and forever but there is one important note here that important note is if I have voltage, for example, maybe 100 volt from anode to cathode, and now I turned on my gate by providing this pulse. Okay, so there is a current 
will go from the anode to cathode. Now, if I provided that pulse, okay, it will turn on, and if I release that pulse or make a return it to zero, it should be on, okay, all the time and forever, for example. But it will return to off state in one condition. If the current going from your anode to cathode is less than the latching current. So even if you turn on your more your trans a thyristor, okay, you have to make sure that the current going from the anode to cathode is more than the latching current. The latching current is provided in the thyristor uh, data sheet. So what is the definition of latching current? Latching current is the minimum anode current required to maintain the thyristor in the on state immediately after a thyristor has been turned on and the gate signal has been removed. So at that edge exactly, okay, I have to make sure that the, la the latching current has been achieved and your current from anode to cathode is more than the latching current. For example, if the latching current is 5 milliampere and you are passing 1 ampere, that, that means your thyristor will latch even if you remove the pulse but if you if your uh, current is uh, from the anode to cathode is maybe one milliampere that means it will switch off once you remove the pulse okay so it will be like a transistor you switch on and off the thyristor like transistor if you are not meeting the latching current the latching current is 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 very low value here for example okay but we have different uh, current which is called the holding current okay i will talk about this now so what is the holding current holding current is the is the minimum current that should be maintained to make the uh, or to keep the thyristor in the on state so you have switched your thyristor and now it's in on state you remove the pulse uh, from the gate and now it's your thyristor is passing the current flowing the current to the load and that's it no problem but suddenly the load here for example has it changed and the changes affected the current the current now start to drop for example but it drops 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 not below the latching current latching current to keep it latched okay now it drops below something called holding current so we are in the on state and we are working in the on state the thyristor is flowing some current through it, but now the current started dropping for some reason, and the current now started drops below something called holding current. At that holding current, the thyristor will switch off again. Okay, so if you want to, to latch your thyristor, you have to make your current above the latching current. If you want to switch off your thyristor, you have to make the current minimum or less than the holding current. Holding, that means it holds it in the on state. If your current is less than the holding current, it will go for uh, to the off state, okay? So now the holding current is the minimum anode current to maintain the thyristor in the on state. Otherwise, it will switch off. So how we switch off the thyristor? This is very important, yes. I can turn it on by providing a pulse. And if the current is higher than the latching, it will keep on. But how I keep it, I turn it off? I can't turn it off if I, for example, uh, provided negative pulse here. No, it doesn't turn off, okay? To turn it off, I have to reduce the current, for example, this current, to make it below the holding current. Because reducing the current more and more and more, down below the holding current, it will turn off. So what other reasons or what other uh, cases? The anode voltage becomes negative or reversed. So I have voltage here positive and negative. Now the voltage reversed or it changed the direction. For example, it happens in the AC, alternating current voltage, okay? So if I have uh, the positive cycle, the positive cycle keeps this side on and that side off, uh, that side uh, keeps that side positive and that side negative but in the negative half cycle that anode will be negative at that time the thyristor will turn off so remember this if the ac is if the ac is uh, voltage applied across the thyristor 
you can turn it on during the positive half cycle, but you can't turn it on during the negative half cycle because this voltage is less than this voltage. Okay, so it will switch off if the voltage has been reversed, for example, or the voltage at the anode is less than the voltage at the cathode. The second one is removing the voltage source. If that is supplied by AC voltage or battery, for example, so if I remove that source, yes, it will switch off. Third one is shorting the anode and cathode. Sometimes they put switch between the anode and cathode, okay, and that switch will uh, will take all the current from the thyristor and pass all the current through the short circuit makes the current below the holding current and turn it off so the passing current should be uh, less than the minimum holding current to turn the um, the thyristor off we have another maybe scr it's called gto which is gate turn off thyristor so it's a, th a thyristor but we can't we can't turn it off okay it, it's an scr that can be turned off by sending a negative pulse to its gate terminal can substitute for transistors in applications above 200 kilowatt or more so we can turn off and on the gto okay and that that brings a good advantage if we want to turn it off for some protection reasons or for some others and it says here it can substitute for transistors because transistors we can turn it on and off as well okay uh, for some application be, be above 200 kilowatt why because some transistors can't work for this value okay that's why we use gto's but now with with using a uh, wide band gap materials and silicon carbide i think we can handle that easily okay let's have now discuss some applications about how this works in ac circuits if i have a sinusoidal wave like this and a, we, I'm, I'm supplying uh, and delivering the voltage there and current to a load like resistive load like this now i want to control the amount of energy delivered to this resistor and how i do that i should chop the current okay and by chopping the current i can really generate less heat or uh, control the speed okay for the load how we do that we can really use diode or thyristor and also for the thyristor i can use the same circuit but now let's go for the first plan which is the diode we know the diode can pass the positive half cycle and doesn't pass the negative half cycle so that's why the current will be has value okay for the positive half cycle and no value for the negative half cycle has value here and no value here if i want to multiply the voltage and current i will get the power okay and this is the instantaneous power delivered to the load so i call it chopper because i chop the negative cycle as whole okay now let's go to the uh, let's go to the thyristor but before that how much energy is delivered to the load if you compare it with the source one it's 50 percent because i delivered just the positive half cycle energy and not the negative half cycle so it's 50 percent delivered to the load now we said that the thyristor is a diode but controlled diode okay so if we have the same example i want to control how much power or energy delivered to the to the load but at that time if I'm using the thyristor, I can control when I can really cut or chop the current. So I don't need to chop it at this time all the time. I can chop it by providing a delay. Okay, so we have a delay there. And then I trigger the gate. I send a pulse on the gate and that will turn on my thyristor. And now the current starts flowing. And at that time, the thyristor will switch off by itself why because reverse voltage okay so at this time now we're going to reverse voltage negative voltage and the thyristor will switch off it will not conduct anything i will wait for the second time and provide some delay and then turn it on so what is the instantaneous power it will look like this compare that one with that one i think you will agree with me that this one is much less okay maybe 35 percent for example we can chop it more as well by providing more delay and then 
uh, providing the gate signal and that will provide this energy so this is how we use thyristors to control the energy delivered to a load so i can i can control the uh, illumination for lamp speed for ac motor for example and other things okay so this is how we control it by providing some delay angle and we call this delay angle as alpha so this is how the thyristor work but for this angle now it's called the conduction period or the conduction angle beta so we have alpha which is the delay or the trigger angle we call it the trigger angle or delay angle alpha and this time or this duration here is called the conduction angle beta okay so this is an example of how we control the uh, illumination of this uh, lamp we have thyristor there thyristor just provide the half cycle positive half cycle and we can control how much i can really uh, deliver to the load by providing there is no delay here for the gate i provided here some delay q uh, phi 2 and more delay here for phi 3 and this is the conduction time there so look at this we just provide a pulse we don't need to sustain all the um, uh, on time over the whole duration of that sinusoidal okay so this is the delay angle again and this is the conduction angle again but we still have a problem with this thyristor it just provides the energy during the positive half cycle what about the negative half cycle it's always cancelled here that's why we will talk in the next in the next lecture about another component it's called the triac that can provide a controllability over the positive and also the negative half cycle thank you very much